guys. Our next guest is always being demanded by the fans. And what better time to get him on than after yesterday's welterweight main event. The man who brings chaos wherever he goes, Colby Covington. Welcome back to the show. How are you, man? I'm doing great, guys. It's, it's good to talk to my boys from down under again. Always a pleasure, man. Let's kick off right where we left off last time, dude. It's been just over a month since we last spoke, where uh, you made it clear you were, you know, not you were going for the Kamaru Usman rematch, and since then, Leon Edwards claimed that the UFC approached him about fighting you. You told us last time that you know you weren't really interested. What were the talks with the UFC like regarding that fight? Uh you know, there wasn't much talks, you know, I, I was busy, you know, balls deep and Pollyanna Viana. So to get me out off the couch in three weeks notice to fight some Leon Scott guy, you know, it was going to be a price tag. You know, I, I you know, I, I wanted a little bit more than was in my contract. I just wasn't going to show up for a normal paycheck to fight that guy for me to come up and show that up on short notice and fight that guy. You know, the way I fight guys, I redline it every time I fight. So when I fight, you know you're getting a Ferrari that's coming forward, high octane, high energy, and he's coming to fight and bring the fight. So if I want to fight at my best, I need a full training camp. So, you know, it, that fight was never, you know, going to happen unless the UFC was going to pay for it to happen. Because like I said before, you know, I was with Pollyanna Viana. I got better things to do than show up on some irrelevant card against some irrelevant guy named Leon Scott. Uh, okay, well, there's a lot to unpack there. Like, let, let's start with the Pollyanna Viana thing, and then we'll talk about the fights. We saw you put up the picture of the two of you. You don't really put up many pictures of you know your teammates or training partners or any girls, unless it's uh, you know the my the my bookie plugs. Obviously, what what's the deal with you and Pollyanna Viana? I know people went crazy, thought the two of you were an item. She went on. She said she's got a boyfriend. Are you the boyfriend? Who's the boyfriend here? <laughs> You know, everybody's going to have to use that their imagination on that one. You know, I'm, I'm not claiming to be your boyfriend, but, you know, what's up with titles these days? Why does there have to be a title? Why can't two adults just have fun together? And that's exactly what we did. We spent a couple of days together, had a great time together. You know, I got to work on my bedroom cardio, keeping world-class championship form, and that's that. You know, I got nothing but respect for her, and, and you know, Pollyanna's a great girl, beautiful girl. I mean... Most guys, you know, they pay a million dollars just to hang out with Pollyanna. So, you know, you got to pay me a million dollars to get me up off the couch when I'm hanging out with Pollyanna Viana. So just going back to the conversations with the UFC, Colby, what was their reaction when you said that you wouldn't do the fight? And did they really not even try to offer you more money to try and come in there on short notice? To be honest, you know, they off, they asked me, they said, hey, what what's it going to take, Colby, for your price? Because first mm -hmm. off, Let's be honest. Why are we in this position? Because this guy, irrelevant, Leon Scott, is supposed to fight some kid named Sputnik. You know, and oh, Sputnik pulls out a couple times. He doesn't want to fight. Your hype job's down the drain. Sorry, UFC. Your, your plan, it's all folded up now. Now it's all in shame. So let's talk about why we got in that position. And then once we get to that position, you know, we're three weeks out. You want me to save your card. You want me to get off the couch when I'm hanging out with Paul Leon and Vianna every day, and you want me to show up and, and save the day and make the UFC great again on short notice? You know, it, it's going to take a price tag. It's not going to be the basic offer that's already in my contract. If you're going to give me the basic offer, I'm going to take a full training camp, and I'm going to take my time. I'm going to fight when I want to fight, when my body's ready to fight. I'm always ready to fight. I, I strive on excellence and always being on shape and always ready to fight, but I also want to fight at peak performance and there's peaks and valleys and I know when to peak and how to have my body ready to peak at the right time so if I want to have my body peaking at the right time I need a full training camp do you feel like after you saved that card with the Robbie Lawler fight the UFC just kind of look at you to do these kinds of fights and don't don't kind of give you that, those proper opportunities like they just kind of oh Colby's the guy that'll just step up and save this card because that's what he can do and do you feel like you're at a point now where you're just saying no like I'm not gonna be that guy anymore like I'm, I'm the guy that needs the proper camp, the, the big fights, and I can't just be like a last second switch out. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm in the Colby Covington Incorporated Championship big fight business. I'm not in the charity business anymore. So, you know, I've done so many favors for the UFC, and the UFC is like, oh, we'll repay you next time. We'll do a favor for you this next time. When have they ever did a favor for me? They've never done nothing for me. I've showed up. I've saved their cards versus Robbie Lawler when I had half my face ripped off on two, three weeks notice. You know, I showed up in Brazil when I wasn't supposed to be in Brazil. I've done so many things for this company, won a title, brought it to the White House, you know, got the president of the United States calling on their ESPN channel on their last fight, giving them tens of millions of views, the highest rated 
post-fight promo that they've ever had in the history of ESPN and MMA and UFC MMA existence. So, you know, they, they need to start giving me what I deserve. You know, I'm sick of this, man. I'm not going to be walked all over like a little kid anymore, man. And, and let's be honest, man, I got other things going on in my life. I got AMC and I got GameStop stock. So, you know, these are, these are some golden hands right here, boys. I might be going to the moon soon. I might be on the moon soon. Who knows? And you know what? If I do go to the moon, I'll still be the baddest motherfucker on the moon. I'm the baddest motherfucker on earth. If I go to the moon, I'm going to be the baddest motherfucker up there too. <laughs> well, if you go to the moon, save a couple of seats in the old spaceship for, uh, for old mm. submission radio. But you mentioned last time how Absolutely. you, good man. Uh, you mentioned last time how you didn't want to do any charity work for Leon Edwards. Obviously one of the reasons being his inactivity. Um, when he found out that he was matched up against Bilal Muhammad, uh, you know, yesterday or the fight that took place yesterday, was a part of you curious to see how he would look given that the UFC wanted to match you guys up? No, I, I could care less how he looks. I, I, you know, I, I've watched little, little tapes from here, bits and pieces from the past. And, you know, I don't think, see anything special. I see a bum. I see a guy that, you know, hasn't fought in two years that, you know, what's the criteria for the rankings? How is he still in the rankings? I, I know that before they pulled him out of the rankings, but because inactivity and he was ducking fights, he didn't want to fight little wonder boy. He didn't want to fight someone else. So they pulled him out of the rankings, but now he's back in the rankings. He still hasn't fought in two years. He has a no contest, which, by the way, that should have been a disqualification because he did poke the guy in the face in the first round. And backstage, I know that Herb Dean gave him the warning, hey, don't poke anybody in the eye because that's the instruction they give every time before you go out there and fight. So he should have been disqualified. I don't know how that was a no contest. But that being said, he still hasn't fought in two years. How is he in the rankings, guys? What's the criteria? So from what – it was a fight that, uh, yeah, finished in such a – strange way and not something that anybody ever wants to see especially in, in a ufc main event but from the little bits that you saw from him did what, what were your thoughts on the leon edwards that we saw that returned back in there against bilal did, were there any takeaways for you is there anything that you noticed about him outside of the uh, the stuff that happened to the eye pokes guys you you think i watched that hard garbage <laughs> are, are you insulting me no because you got the my bookie what do you mean my bookie, we, my bookie, we didn't do a promo for this fight. They don't do promos for fights where nobody's watching. You know, come on, guys. Come on. The, the disrespect and the insulting today on your boy, Colby Chaos Covington. I always bring the views and the ratings to Submission Radio, and you do me like this? Can we still come to the moon with you, or is this, is this up or over? That's okay. President Trump, we'll have you on Space Force. We'll, you know, we'll get you back on the moon, the spaceship with us. I forgive you. I'll give you guys a pass. Thank you. All right, good. So, so you're obviously busy doing other things. You didn't watch the fight, but we'll, we'll fill you in. Basically, post-fight, Leon... Uh, called for a title shot. And I'm wondering what you think of that, considering that <laughs> you're gunning for the title shot as well. Um, what did you make of it? Oh, I mean, it's hilarious. You know, I had some people saying, oh, it was an accident. An accident is if one of the lights in above the octagon falls in the octagon and hits one of the fighters in the head. That's an accident. An accident is if Herb Dean has a heart attack in the octagon and he's not able to ref and they have to call off a fight. That's an accident. A second eye poke, a third eye poke, those aren't accidents. That should have been a disqualification. The guy hasn't won a fight in two years. Like I said, guys, he's been turning down fights left and right with multiple people behind me in the rankings that are nobodies. I'm the number guy, one guy in the world. Me and Marty Fake Newsman have unfinished business. And he knows that. He, he claims to be from Nigeria. He's from Arlington, Texas. There's no city in Texas named Nigeria. And the guy's, Marty Fake Newsman is the biggest hypocrite in all of sports. I mean, the guy's trashing me for being a Trump supporter, but he's sitting at a Trump rally front row. Ali's got him front row at a Trump rally because he's got him like a little leash, like a little dog, walking around like a little dog. So me and Marty Fake Newsman got unfinished business, guys. Seriously, there's so much controversy in the first fight. I was winning the fight three to one. Everybody knows I was winning that fight. It was an early stoppage. It was a bullshit stoppage. Not to mention the fake stoppage with, with my momentum when I kicked him in the liver and I call a nut shot. Oh, I barely grazed one eye. He's he's faking the other eye. This is on camera, Marty Fake Newsman. You're a terrible actor. We know you're not that great of a fighter, and you're a terrible draw. We know you're the worst draw just because you have no charisma. Literally, there's more charisma with a wet mop than you. But we got unfinished business, and there's only one fight to make. That's me versus Marty Fake Newsman. Mm. Usman spoke to MMA Junkie about how if you'd gone in there and beaten Leon Edwards, um, if you went in there and you've beaten Leon Edwards, that you made a tremendous mistake not fighting Leon, 
Um, what do you make of him wanting you to be back in action before the two of you fight again? Him having the sort of notion that you need to fight someone else before he'd rematch you. Uh, last time I checked, uh, Marty Fake Newsman's not the matchmaker. He's not Dana White. He's not the UFC. He doesn't decide that. I already came back and dusted and finished the guy that he couldn't finish in Tyrone Woodley. Everybody was giving the goat talk on Tyrone Woodley when he was on his reign. Everybody was saying he was the best thing, this and that. No one's ever finished Tyrone Woodley in the, in the octagon, in the UFC octagon. I'm the only one to finish it. I came back. I, I knocked out and finished Tyrone Woodley. No one's won a fight. Jorge Masvidal has been sitting on the sidelines, you know, freaking doing his little thing over there. Who knows what he's doing? He's training Jake Paul. Yeah, we, we saw how well it worked out for, for Tyrell Woodley when Jorge Masvidal was trying to train him. So we can already only imagine what Jake Paul's going to look like now that Jorge Masvidal is training him for the Ben Askren fight. When the UFC called you and tried to get you on board last minute for this Leon Edwards fight, did you mention the Kamara Usman rematch? And what was the response to you? Of course I mentioned the Marty fake newsman rematch. And, you know, their response was, oh, we're going to do the Marty versus George fight. I'm like, what are you talking about, Dana? After I starched Tyrone Woodley back in September and had the president of the United States calling during the heat, most heated election in the history of the United States, and he called on your ESPN channel and on your UFC live TV stream, when, I, when I'm fighting, I got you all those ratings, and you promised me Jorge Masvidal. You said, Oh, it's you and George. That's the fight to make. You know, everybody wants to see that. That's the fight that people want to see. That's a real grudge match. We actually want to kill each other. We used to be best friends. Now we want to kill each other. I'm the king of Miami. He's walking around like he owns a 305, but he knows who his daddy is. I'm his daddy. I'm Jorge Masuel's daddy. I want a Father's Day present this year. And let's be honest, guys. I don't want to get 25 to life. If I, you know, I just want to fight Jorge Masvidal or Marty Fake Newsman because if I don't fight him in the UFC octagon, I'm getting 25 for life for fighting him outside the octagon. Mm. <clears throat> it's definitely two fights that people want to see. Um, when you when you were speaking to the UFC, what did they say? What what was the reason they gave to you for why they're going in that direction, uh, going with the Masvidal Usman rematch? It seems like it might be happening in September. Yeah. So. You know, the funny thing they tried to say, they tried to make an excuse, you know, the same built-in excuse that uh, Street Judas Masvidal gave before the fight. Oh, Street Judas, you know, Dana's like, oh, he, you know, Masvidal only had a week preparation for Ma for, for Marty Fake Newsman, so we got to do the rematch because he only had a week to prepare the first time. I'm like, Dana, what are you talking about, dude? Dustin Poirier came out and exposed George, saying that he was training his whole time in his training camp and the lead up to the Dan Hooker fight, he'd been prepared. He trained three, four months. And Masvidal knew if anything happened in that fight, he was going to get the call and be able to capitalize and make more money off it. So he was training. You know, he was doing his thing. He was, you know, training in Poirier's camp. There's no excuse. You know, he was taking pictures with that Bo Nickel guy, the wrestler. Oh, I'm doing this. I'm training with this guy. I'm ready to fight, blah, blah. There's no excuse. That fight goes the same way, guys. Marty Fabe News is going to be boring. He's going to beat him up for five rounds. It's going to be boring. It's going to be the same exact outcome why are you going to reward a guy that's been ducking fights that's ducking a fight with me and then you just automatically give him a title shot what did he come back and prove did he come back and win a fight no he didn't come back and win a fight i came back and i finished tyro woodley an all-time great a hall of famer in the ufc what has he done since then besides make excuses and duck fights i'm here to fight i'm ready to fight anyone in the world i'm the best welterweight in the world and i guarantee that mark my words take it to the bank especially take it to mybookie.ag use code colby because you're guaranteed going to make your bank account great again that's it make some money so you spoke to dana white i'm wondering what was his reaction when you said hey i'm not i'm not fighting leon and i'm not gonna i'm just gonna sit out and i'm gonna wait and did he tell you that um hey this fight's happening in september so you might be waiting for a bit what was his reaction to you saying i'm not taking these fights and i'm gonna wait for the winner of this one he didn't like it, guys. He just, he pretty much was like, okay. And he just hung up and, and that was the end of the call. You know, he just, he didn't like what I had to say, you know, but you know, I'm in the, I'm in the Colby Covington Incorporated business now. I'm not in the, the, the business to do charity. You know, I've earned what I've earned. Look at my record, guys. I've beaten former champions, you know, I've beaten Hall of Famers, you know, the list of resume of all the all time greats that I beat, you know, I'm in the biggest fights, the pay-per-view fights. You know, selling big draw on the company. I mean, you guys know who does the ratings for this show. I mean, I'm, we're pulling better numbers than the ESPN channel, and they have millions of subscribers. I mean, I deserve what I deserve, and I deserve what I earn. You know, I'm a hardworking, blue-collar American that just wants 
what he deserves. You know, I'm going to put it all on the line. I'm going to give you a great fight. Every time I fight, you know what you're going to get. You know you're going to get high octane, high energy, an American that wants blood, you know. And, and I know a lot of my right-wing conservative people, they want blood right now. You know, we were cheated out of election. It was an unfair election with Donald Trump. They cheated. They rigged the system. So, you know, we want blood on our hands. So I know a lot of Republicans and right-wing people that want blood. I want to give it to them. I hope the UFC can give it to them, too. Give the people what they want, UFC. Put Colby Chaos coming to in a title fight or in a grudge match with Jorge Masvidal because you don't need a title fight for that. It's a pay-per-view fight. Let's get it done. Let's go. Stop wasting time. I think one of the things that, you know, all the Chaos fans are a bit upset about is the fact that, you know, if you don't get this title fight and it goes down in September, you could effectively be out of the picture for quite some time because let's say you fight the winner of Usman Masvidal, they might not be ready to fight till December or maybe even 2022. So is there a good chance that we might see Colby Covington not fight in 2020, uh, 2020, sorry? 2021. 2021, so I'm all over the place. <laughs> I haven't had enough bang energy this morning. Sorry, Colby. Yeah, you guys got to get some bang energy. No sugar, you know, no crashes. Just all the good stuff. You know, is, there the a, is, there, right is there a chance we don't see you fight this year because of the scheduling of this fight? <laughs> no, no chance that you don't see me fight this year. You know, I'm going to fight this year and just... That fight's not done, you know, and I'm waiting to see what happens. That's far from a done deal. We know how hard uh, Jorge Street Judas Masvidal is to, to negotiate with. The guy likes to pick and choose. He thinks he's a big draw. Oh, dude, what's your last win? Nate Diaz, a 500 fighter? Who'd you beat before that? Ben Askren, who was 0-4 in the UFC? The guy's a nobody. He's a journeyman. He's the broken, mediocre fighter. He's not a bad motherfucker. He's a broken, mediocre fighter. So the guy's a joke. The fight's not done with him and Marty Fake Newsman, so I'm going to wait to see what happens until that fight's booked and done and sealed, and, and then I'll make my decisions from there. I want to give the people what they want. They want entertainment. They want excitement. They want Colby Chaos Covington to come to wreak havoc in the UFC octagon, and I'm going to come do it soon. It's going to happen sooner or later. Mm. And just to clarify, if the UFC did try and revisit the, the Leon Edwards fight, um, is there any is there anything that would make that fight interest, interesting for you? Is there anything that the UFC could do to sort of, you know, sweet, sweeten the pot, um, you know, and, and sort of make you feel like you're not really doing charity work for Leon? Yeah, definitely. They, they know what they can do, man. They know they can... They know what they, they can do to get me to show up for that fight, but I'm not showing up for charity, guys. You know, the guy still hasn't won in two years. You know, in no contest, that's not a win. That's not a fight. He's got to come back and win. You know, he needs to rematch that Bailey guy. You know, they need to fight again. That Bailey guy was talking all reckless all week, saying, oh, if Colby, if I saw that guy in the streets, I'll slap him. I'll do this. Bro, are you kidding me? Dustin Poirier and Jorge Maso said the same thing. Oh, it's on site. I'm going to smack Colby when I see him in the streets. But then when they see me, it's head down. Pipe down, little boy. These little boys, they talk reckless in the media. But then when we see each other face to face, it's not that same energy. It's a different energy. So, you know, these guys are talking reckless out there. Rerun that Leon fight versus Bailey because nobody gives a shit about it. No one wants to watch that hot garbage. The only fight to make is me versus Marty Fake Newsman or me, me versus Street Judas Masvidal. All right. And as, before we wrap up, we got to also mention, of course, you got the bang energy on the table. My bookie there. What can people sort of look out for right now before your, ne your next fight gets announced? Uh, what, what do they need to watch out for from Colby Covington? We're doing big things this year at Colby Covington Incorporated. We're working hard every single day. You know, I'm fighting for the troops. I'm fighting for law enforcement. I'm fighting for the Trumps. I'm fighting for America. So, you know, there's, there's no easy passes around here, man. I'm earning it every single day. Every single day I wake up, I, I, I find a way to get better. I find a way to work a little harder. I find a little way to draw inspiration from the people that are inspirational, the, the heroes of this country, the backbone of this country, law enforcement, military. So I'm going to keep working hard and putting it all on the line for them. And I guarantee the next time you see me, it, you're not, I'm not going to be recognizable. You guys are going to be like, who is this guy? This is this caged animal you let out of the the cage, this gorilla, this guy's unstoppable. Man, it's going to be scary when I come back. Someone's going to get starched. I guarantee someone's getting knocked out. And they're going to talk about Colby being the gold of the welterweight division. Well, business is good at Colby Covington Incorporated. We appreciate your time. Of course, follow the man at Colby Cov MMA on social media to keep up with all of the latest posts and One updates. last thing, guys. One last thing. Let's also talk about, you know, Wonder Boy. This guy's a 40-year-old man. He's claiming to be a boy. 
what? I guess you can identify these days as whatever you want. Because if he wants to be a boy, he's a 40-year-old man. He drives around in his karate van with karate kids, and he watches cartoons. What's scary about that? There's nothing scary about that. If his dad was a, re was a real man, he would have put his son in wrestling, not karate. The guy's irrelevant. And Dilbert, Dilbert, you're coming off a knockout loss. You're a lightweight washout. You're a scrub. You don't deserve to fight anything. You need to go beat a couple bumps at lightweight. So this division is mine. I'm the welterweight kings. Nobody's stopping me. You can delay me, UFC, but you cannot deny me. And does this mean that Wonder Boy might be on the hit list, or is he still not someone that you'd be interested in? Hit list for the right for the right prize, guys. I'm a prize fighter. I love the fight. I'm the best fighter in the world. For the right prize, I'll show up and fight anybody in the world. All right, guys. Well, we're excited to see what is next with Colby Covington and Cole Pereira. Colby, thank you so much for joining us. Excited to see whose name you draw next. Appreciate it, guys. Have a good one.